Hi, everyone. Uh, sorry I can't be there with you. Uh, but lucky for us, today's lesson is going to be, it's, a, it's an extension of the assignment that was given to you earlier. Um, today, we're going to look at how we can take real life data, data, and turn it into an equation without the, cal uh, without the calculator, without the computer, without Desmos, without any algorithms. Okay, so um, you could think of this as a um, as a tip, as a service that I'm doing for you. Just pay particular attention to this because in the assignment, there are, I believe, if I remember correctly, two different questions that get you to create an equation. One is finding an equation from your data in factored form. And also, if you can take that and create an equation in vertex form. And if you remember what those are, well, just to remind you, um, factored form, you see that we have two binomials multiplying each other. You should remember that we can get that kind of form from a polynomial by, you guessed it, factoring. And if you reach all the way back to chapter one, you might remember that this form is special, it's called vertex form, because if you know what the value of H is, and you know what the value of K is, you automatically know what the vertex is. So for example, if H was a one, K was a two, that means my vertex is one, two, and my graph, one, two, would have my vertex right there, and it would be you know either something like this, or it could be upside down, something like this, depending on what the A value is, of course, right, right here. Um, but with that said, that's a quick refresher. Let's see how that works. If the question is giving you a bunch of data points, like I am giving you right now, and it asks you to create an equation in factored form, well, example one is going to cover how you can do that to create a, what I'm going to call a curve of good fit, and not the best fit because you know we're not computers here. We're trying to find a decent equation that seems to work and that is acceptable in modeling our real life data points. Example two and three, we're gonna we're gonna go a little further and see what we could do, what I guess um, techniques or what solutions, what methods open up to us if you're given points that include the vertex, that include x-intercept, so on and so forth. And of course, example three, um, how you can create vertex form equations. Okay, so here it is. Pay special attention. Once again, this is me basically doing parts of the assignment for you. All you have to do is figure out what numbers to plug in and work from it from there. Example one, find an equation in factored form. Again, that is ax minus r. So y is equal to a x minus r, x minus s, given the x-intercepts and some random point. If you recall, r and s um, correspond with the x-intercepts of my function. Once you have these two numbers, all that's left is to figure out the a value and you're done. That's it. Let's go through it together. Looking at my graph, okay, finding a ball is thrown into the air. So sort of like our little uh, Desmos assignment where you had to toss a ball or something and you had to measure how far you threw it. Uh, I know that the x-intercepts are going to be when the object hits the ground. So let's take a look at my data sets. When time, uh, let's put time here, and my height is y. Okay. When time is zero, my height is zero. What does that mean? When x is zero, my y is zero. I know for a fact that one of my points can be accurately labeled as zero, zero on the graph. Where else in my data set is my y value a zero? When is it going to be an x intercept? That would be right here. When x is 5, my y is 0, which means I can confidently say that this ball lands on the ground 5 seconds after. And that's it. Taking these points, you know that the x-intercepts are 0 and 5. You can say already that my equation will be x minus 0, 
and x minus a positive five. And if I clean this up, it's just x because, you know, subtracting by zero doesn't do anything. And then x minus five. You're half done. All you have to figure out is the a value. And how do we do that? We use one more point. Now, it is my recommendation that you find a point as far away from the zero and as far away from the five as possible. And that is far away from the x-intercepts uh, uh, on both sides as possible. So here, I think you can choose a 2-3. So in other words, sorry, 2-30 or a 3-30 as my points. I'm going to arbitrarily choose 2 and 30. In other words, when my x is a 2, my y is a 30, let's plug it in. Plug in. y is equal to 30 when x is equal to 2. So all my x's are written as 2. So a times 2 times negative 3. I'm running out of space. You probably still have space. 30 is equal to... Uh, 2 times negative 3, negative 6 times a. How do I get a all alone? Divide both sides by negative 6, and you have yourself minus 5. Therefore, for this data set, I am going to say an equation that fits this data pretty well is going to take the shape of negative 5, x, x minus 5. And as a test, I'm going to try it. I'm going to plug in, let's say, x equals 4 and see if we get close to 20. If we get 20, amazing. If we get close to 20, I'm happy. Because remember, it's a curve of good fit. So what is when x equals 4? Negative 5, 4, 4 minus 5. Negative 5 times 4. Uh, sorry, I'm just going to write this down. 4 minus 5, let's follow bed mass. Negative 5 times 4 times a negative 1 is a positive 20. Amazing. Okay, so I'm very happy with this equation. Uh, if, even if it was like a 19 or a 21 or something, I'd be fairly okay. I'd be happy with the equation. But I got it right at 20, so I'm really good. So here is how we can take two x-intercepts, bam, and bam and then take a random point on the curve, plug it in to identify the a value. So the equation is a times a zero uh, times x minus zero and x minus five. That's it, you're done. So this is good enough. I just wanted to test it to see if I was happy or if I was sad, that's all. Okay, so this part that the boxed area is good enough. Um, so that's example one. Uh, if people are still copying, uh, I would ask the substitute teacher to pause the video for me. Otherwise, I'm going to move on to example two, where it asks you, what would you do if dot, dot, dot? Okay, so here's example two, where you have the x-intercepts again, along with a vertex. So find an equation in factored form, that is y is equal to this, given the x-intercepts, which are pretty, I'm going to say accurate, I think I can safely assume what the x-intercepts are, that's negative 2, and this is positive 4, and a vertex. So I'm going to, again, assume negative 12, negative 14, negative 16, this is negative 18, and that's 1. So the vertex is 1, negative 18. What do you do when you have these points? Well, in short, the exact same thing as example one. In example one, we use the x-intercepts to figure out what my binomials are. x minus a negative two and x minus a positive four. I'm already half done just because I knew what the x-intercepts were. Following. I know that x, well, 1, negative 18 is the vertex, but I'm going to treat it like a normal point, which it is. When y equals negative 18, it is because x was a 1. 
So we have one plus two, we have one minus four. So negative 18 is equal to negative nine A. How do I get A all alone? Well, divide both sides by negative nine. So negative 18 divided by negative nine is a two. And because, you know, that's, that's a one. Therefore, my equation is y equals 2x plus 2x minus 4. The x's and the y are left empty or left unspecified as variables because that's the whole point of an equation where if you plug in an x value, you get yourself a y value. So they should be blank at the end of the day. Here's my equation. That's it. So once again, um, just to see if that is correct, right? Uh, again, I could have plugged in some numbers, but instead this time, I'm going to show you another way you can check, and that is plug this equation in to Desmos. So uh, once I go to Desmos, I believe all my annotations, all my writing here will disappear. So if uh, the substitute can pause the video to see if there's anyone that needs to copy it down again. I am going to quickly switch over to Desmos this uh, to type in 2x plus 2x minus 4 right here. y is equal to 2x plus 2x minus 4. And that's it. Sort of looks familiar. This is very similar to the graph that we had on my on that sheet in front of you. So take a look at your sheet right now and compare with what we have up here on the screen. And so I hope that you are convinced that um, having three points, if you have x-intercepts and any point, right, you can create an equation for yourself. My final example is going to take this exact same graph and write, uh, instead of writing it as a, uh, whatchamacallit, instead of writing a factored form equation, the question is going to ask you, to find a vertex form equation. And I think that's useful because your assignment will also ask for the vertex form. I thought it was fair game because you've co covered this material in chapter one. And so to avoid the risk of for completely forgetting what the vertex form is, I'm gonna get you to do it here. Please recall the vertex of my graph sorry, the vertex form is this. And you have this in your sheet already. The vertex, according to that graph above, was 1, negative 18. And I need any other point to make this work. You need a vertex, and you need any other point to make this work. I could use 4, 0. I could use negative 2, 0. Just to keep it simple with uh, positive numbers, I might use the number, uh, the point four zero. Okay, so here we go. Because I know the vertex, I automatically have numbers to plug in for h, so x minus a positive one, a squared, plus k, and k happens to be a negative, so plus a negative 18 is the same as saying just negative 18. We are half done. So again, 1, negative 18, 1, negative 18. We are half done. All that's left is to plug in x equals 4, y equals 0. So y is a 0 when x equals a 4. So that is a times uh, 4 minus 1 is a 3. 3 squared is 9. Let's bring 18 to the other side. So this becomes 18. So plus 18 plus 18. And this is 9a. 9 to get it all alone, divide both sides by 2. Bam. Therefore, my vertex form is 2x minus 1 squared minus 18. Um, happy not, not coinc coincidence, coincidence. The a value is exactly the same as it should be, for example, two and three. The only difference between up and down is on the example two, we started with x-intercepts before we figured out the a value. For example, three, 
we started with the vertex before we identified the A value. Okay, now this video is available to us online in Google Classroom. So if you are stuck or if you don't remember or you need a refresher for completing the assignment, please visit and rewatch the video to see how you can go about creating vertex form and factor form. Check it out. Use this, uh, use this section examples to help calculate equations for your chapter three assignment. And that's it. I hope this is helpful for you. I don't have any homework here for you to do because your assignment is going to get you to do this anyways. So use your homework, uh, do homework by completing the assignment on time. Please be wary of the due date. It's gonna be right, uh, it's gonna be after the weekend and the rest of class time is yours to work either together or whatnot. Remember, your data is together but your calculations must all be done individually. If there is no collaboration, you must figure it out on your own. Best of luck. I'll see you again soon. Have a good weekend.